This Sunday, the liturgy will really hinge around the gospel reading where Jesus heals a man who has been blind since birth. And as we talked about last week, we can see even in this Lenten season, uh, we can see this outreach from God towards humanity, this, this uh, reaching out in love and connection. And that's something that uh, Tom has especially been talking about in his sermons. It's something that we've all tried to really emphasize during this Lenten season. Um, so often in the past, uh, Lent has been such a dark time of focusing on our mortality and our sins and our unworthiness. And it's not that those things are completely off the radar screen. We need to keep those in mind to an extent. But it's so much better to really think about how God is reaching out towards us in love and that embrace of love, bringing us light, bringing us joy and full life. Uh, and that's really what this gospel narrative is about, about giving this person full sight, a full experience of the richness of life, those bountiful uh, gifts that God gives each of us. So you'll see here in the prayers and in the hymns that same underlying uh, concept or that reassurance that there is a richness to life that God offers us. And as the springtime develops, as the, as the birds are returning and the, and the flowers are blooming here in East Tennessee, we hope that you will have that sense of new life and the richness of life. So we'll come in singing uh, verses from a psalm, uh, a paraphrase of Psalm 146. I'll praise my maker while I have breath, and when my voice is lost in death, Praise shall employ my nobler powers. This idea that I will praise God through all that I have and even beyond uh, my earthly life. And in our hymnal, this is uh, matched with a tune um, that was originally a hymn tune that was intended to be sung with a metrical psalm, although a different psalm. And it starts off with a fairly familiar contour. the same origin as another very familiar hymn tune, Lostunes or Freuden, uh, what we would sing with all creatures of our God and King. That very familiar and very triumphant hymn has, uh, it shares a common ancestry with this tune, and you can hear that in that first phrase. choir will be singing um, a setting, a, an arrangement of a very popular uh, hymn tune, It Is Well With My Soul. Uh, again, that idea of, of relying on the assurance of God's goodwill. And then thinking more specifically about that healing passage at the communion, uh, the choir will be singing There Is a Balm Gilead, one of our most popular anthems, something that we always get a lot of good feedback from when we sing. And then at the end, uh, of, the, of the service as we go out, we'll be singing a Charles Wesley text, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my dear Redeemer's praise, with that very sturdy and popular early American uh, tune, Asmon. Uh, the tune actually has, like that other uh, hymn tune, it actually has some older roots uh, back in some European models, but as we know it, it really took its shape under the pen of Lowell Mason, who was an early American uh, hymn writer, hymn composer, and hymnologist. And of course, the verses of that hymn speaks very specifically about the healing. Hear him, ye deaf. You voiceless ones, your loosened tongues employ. You blind, behold, your Savior comes, and leap, ye lame, for joy. So really picturing that idea that God gives us health, and in response, we give our praise to God. So we hope that you will join us here at St. John's as we offer our praise as we continue through our Lenten journey here.